Thanks for the intro. Thanks for joining me virtually. I'm here today to talk about BNR industrial automation and its use in aerospace applications. First, a little bit about me. My name is David Nichols. I'm the CEO of a company called Loop. I'm a controls and software engineer, and I have been working for the last 14 years as a BNR systems integrator and distributor. This is a shot of us uh, and our team in Portland as of a couple years ago. We've about doubled in that time in our headcount thanks to a lot of new work in these type of applications. Uh, we're really excited about it and I hope that you are too. When Mark and the BNR team asked me to come share some experiences, I was, I was happy to do that. They, and the brief I was given was to come and talk about what's new and interesting about BNR and why, why is this interesting or why is this something that we should check out. I'm really happy to do that because it really fits with our mission at Loop, which is to revolutionize automation and robotics. So to get specific about what I think would be interesting for uh, folks in aerospace to know about in terms of applications and BNR, there's a few that I want to go through and I'll talk about. And then uh, I can talk about some of the patterns. So the first one is drill fill. The next one is composites layup. And then we'll just share. Then I'll just share some of the patterns. Like where, what do we see? Uh, why are, why are people using ABB and BNR in these in these types of, of processes and applications? So uh, I'll just get started off with drill fill, and I will share. This is a this is a speculative concept, a very early stage notion of of how can we approach an ABB and be in our combination to solve a problem, in this case of uh, drilling holes in composite uh, components and, and filling those with fasteners. We've all seen these kind of systems out in factories, really impressive, really cool, but we think we have something kind of interesting to share here, which is that um, all of the sensing, locating, drilling, and faster insertion systems, they all want to ride on this head. So I've drawn this, you, know, you see this robot here on the left, That's standing in for, a, for an ABB uh, IRB8700, which is an 800 kilogram ABB robot that we think would be really great for this type of process. And then in this light gray box, we've got a bunch of different capabilities for doing the vision inspection, doing the probing, drilling, bolt insertion, spindle. Uh, there's a lot of vision and other um, lateral movement that needs to happen to, to get that process done. We've also got some computers hanging out up in there. We've got some servo drives and we've got some IO systems, some safety systems. There's really a lot going on in a drill head. And one of the things that we think is special about our approach to this is that using BNR components, just feeding some ethernet lines and some power lines into the head really gives you everything that you need to address all of the control tasks that are going on in a, in a drill fill process. Um, and so what that means is that the head can be detachable. And the head is detachable, and that's valuable for a couple really important reasons. For one thing, uh, you can, you know, in a lot of systems that are done like this today, all of the systems are integrated and really coupled together. It's hard to have a lot of flexibility in terms of dropping off the head. Hey, this needs to be serviced. Hey, this needs to be refilled with fasteners. Just even basic things. The head needs to be dropped off. We want to pick up another one, keep it going, keep the process going, keep the, keep the equipment efficiency really high. Um, the other thing that's important is that this kind of drill head system, it really can and maybe should be sourced uh, from, a, from suppliers or integrators as an independent unit. And so, the fact that all these components can live on the head and it's really self-contained means this is something that you could have the robot come in, pick up, uh, direct the guffle line and, and supply in large numbers as opposed to being as part of this really complicated um, interdependent cell. The fact that all of the components live inside that head makes the system way easier to modularize. It's better for facilities, it's better for sourcing. You can see here we even added a little banana for scale. All this stuff is really compact. Another pattern and an area of work that we've spent a significant amount of time in the last several years is in composites layup. And really the summary there is that there's one controller with one clock that runs the entire system. So uh, on this chart, which is a, a system diagram that we've used to explain this concept, there's really two important pathways for a process like uh, like composites layup, and that is the primary motion platform, whether that's a robot, whether that's a gantry, uh, that needs to be taking place. It needs to be extremely accurate. It needs to be really fast. 
uh, and often that's handled by a motion control system or a standard off-the-shelf robot controller. But then you have to actually cut the tape. You have to you have a lot of motion control in the head. You have a lot of extremely precise I/O systems that need to land those cutters exactly at the right place in order to get a good quality part. And the way that we approach that with BNR controls is to say, we're gonna take over all of the path planning, we're gonna take over all of the real-time systems for not only the primary motion control, but all of the secondary motion control and all of the high-speed IO signals. And what that means is we can align those triggers using look-aheads within microseconds of when they're supposed to land. That's even when you're talking about waiting for these uh, cutter solenoids to fire and things that take a really long time. The openness and the flexibility of this architecture and the fact that it's running on one clock means we can land those things really precisely, which directly inputs into speed and product quality in the end product. This kind of approach is why you hear BNR and ADB talking about machine-centric robotics, which is sort of the general framing and the general way that, that ADB and BNR talk about this process. When you combine the worlds of conventional controls and robotic controls into a single controller, you can really boost the performance of these machines. On this slide, we've taken that same concept and applied it to the controls of a gantry system where you have a couple large screens that look like NC controllers. You have PC-based control system that's running all, all manner of different software for compensations, for path planning, all of the real-time systems, and all of the systems that figure out uh, how this how this process is gonna, gonna get done properly. And then you have all the large systems on a, on a gantry axis. So multiple, multiple X axes, multiple Y axes, A, B, and C for the head. You've got these gigantic motion control, these gigantic motors that are running, the, running this big gantry. And then you have the head. The process head has 20, 20 or more different motors that all need to be precisely coordinated. All that really precise AO firing is riding along with that. And in the same way that we talked about detachable heads for the drill fill system, we also are talking about building detachable heads for, for these kind of composite systems. They need to be reloaded, they need to be serviced. We need to keep that main gantry and that main motion system running as much as possible to keep the throughput up. And so we've also talked about how we can detach different major components of this control system uh, and keep that machine going. That kind of flexibility and modularity that BNR controls provides is really a direct benefit to this kind of system and, and has a really big impact on the machine performance in the bottom line. So I've touched on it in a couple in a couple of these application contexts, but I want to just really hammer it home about why do people look at ABB and BNR for these types of technologies to solve their problems? Why are people in aerospace considering or even looking at looking at this compared to what they might be used to using before? And the major theme and the major motivation that I want to talk about is openness and flexibility. A lot of controller companies, fairly or not, have kind of the Henry Ford approach of you can get any color you want as long as it's black. The fact is that many aerospace applications have unique or really demanding requirements compared to general industry. So often in aerospace context, we're going back to a vendor and saying, hey, we need you to make this change. We want you to add this to your firmware. We want you to add this. The thing about BNR and ABB is that we enable, we support, we really encourage tweaks or modifications to solve new and innovative processes. And we're ready to do that. We want to help with that. In fact, the engineering of the product and the way that these systems are built to work together is really open to do that. We, it's not something that as a loop, we need to go back to the vendor. We need to necessarily go back to BNR to ask for, for permission to do. Often there's hooks or interfaces or really low level control available. So we can do what we need to do to solve the problem um, rather than uh, convincing or getting onto their, their development uh, their development timelines for when when we can get a feature, which is, is often just too far into the future um, compared to the opportunity that we see. So I'll emphasize that 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 openness and that flexibility, that 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 sort of um, ability to make it do what you need it to do, is something that's really special about about BNR and ABB especially. And finally, uh, the other thing is that ABB Robotics is really a market leader. Uh, ABB Robotics has been around for a long time, and I understand to be one of the one of the really preferred suppliers. <clears throat> but the fact is, robots are always surrounded by PLCs, HMIs, industrial PCs, other motion control, other safety systems. If you look at these examples that I've been through today, you see all of those systems are surrounding the robotic systems. They're always present there because they have important jobs to do. And ADB in, in its offering with BNR together is one of the really only companies that, that can make a credible case that all of those components, all that technology can come from a single company. That's something that's really special. 
I've been really excited to work with the ABB people in the time since uh, ABB and BNR came together, and uh, I'm looking forward to even more possibilities as these as these product lines and these these different groups within within ABB really start to to merge and 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 become seamless. It's really special what's happening, and and it's really unique as well. So if any of this sounds interesting to you, Loop runs a process called New Machine Concept. Uh, we're often used to getting crumpled up cocktail napkins or whiteboard sketches of, hey, we think this would be possible. If that sounds like something that you or your groups are doing, we would love to hear from you. We'd love to run this process and talk with you about how we can help bring some of these things in, about and make them real. Uh, reach out to me. Our website is loop.team, L-O-U-P-E dot team. Uh, you can check us out there. We have a lot of fun making videos and talking about new technologies. Uh, stay tuned, uh, keep in touch, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me. See you next time.